Midjourney's parameters give you a lot of control over the style, content, and variety of images created, but figuring out where to start can feel overwhelming, especially if you're a beginner. Today, I'm sharing the four parameters every beginner should learn first before diving into more advanced features. First is aspect ratio. Aspect ratio controls the shape of your image, whether it's a square, tall, or wide. Midjourney's default aspect ratio is one to one, which creates square images. To use a different aspect ratio, type dash dash AR at the end of your prompt, a space, and then the aspect ratio you want. This is the aspect ratio parameter. Any Midjourney parameter that you add to your prompt will start with two dashes like this. Aspect ratios are always written as width colon height. So if you want a tall image, the first number will be smaller than the second. Here I've prompted for a character using a one to two aspect ratio, which means the height is equal to twice the width. If you find that you're always using the same aspect ratio, such as 16 by nine, you can go into your settings and change your default by clicking and dragging this dot here. All future images that you generate will then use that aspect ratio, unless you override it by adding the aspect ratio parameter directly to your prompt. Any parameter added to your prompt always wins over any defaults that you have set. Once you're comfortable with this, you can also learn how to use Midjourney's editor to change the aspect ratio of an existing image. I have separate videos on the editor that I'll link below. Next, we have chaos. Chaos controls how much variation you get in your image grid. So on the create page, this is called an image grid. It contains four image results from a single prompt. By default, the four images that Midjourney creates from your prompt will be somewhat similar to each other. If you want more diversity in your results, this is where chaos comes in. Midjourney's default value for chaos is zero. To override this in your prompt, add dash dash chaos a space, and then a number from zero to 100. You can also just type dash dash C instead of writing out chaos. Here are a couple of image grids using the same prompt, but different chaos values. As you increase the chaos value, you'll see the styles of the individual images become more distinct from one another, especially as you get into those higher values. I often use a chaos value of five just to shake things up a bit. If you wanna change your default chaos value, you can do so in your settings. Just grab the variety slider here and move it to the value that you want. I always keep it at zero and do recommend that for beginners as well. The third parameter is stylize. Stylize controls the strength of Midjourney's default aesthetic. Each Midjourney model has its own built-in visual style and stylize determines how strongly that style gets applied to your results. Midjourney's default stylize value is 100. You can override this by adding dash dash stylize or just dash dash s to your prompt, followed by a number from zero to 1000. Lower values are going to give you results that stick more closely to your prompt text with less artistic interpretation. Higher values let Midjourney add more of its aesthetic styling and artistic interpretation, but the trade-off is that Midjourney might not follow your prompt text as closely. Here you can see what happens with this prompt as I increase the stylize value. I recommend keeping the default stylize value set to 100 and then just override it by adding the stylize parameter to your prompt as needed. But if you do want to change the default, you can do that here in your settings. Stylize is a bit more nuanced than aspect ratio or chaos, but for me, it's the most important parameter to learn in order to begin understanding Midjourney's aesthetic styling and how it can interact with your prompt. There are also other more advanced features that Stylize interacts with, such as personalization and mood boards. If you're interested in learning about those features, you can check out the videos down in the pinned comment. Then we have the version parameter. Version controls which Midjourney model creates your images. When you first start with Midjourney, a default model will already be selected for you. And this is usually the most recent model that Midjourney has released. To see which model is selected, you can go to your settings menu and then find this section where it says version. Right now, the default model is V7, but that will be changing soon. You can use Midjourney's older models either by changing your default selection here and then all of your future prompts will use that model. Or you can specify it on a prompt by prompt basis by including dash dash version or dash dash V followed by the model that you want to use. Remember, any parameter added to your prompt will override the default selection. So why is the version parameter important for beginners? 
First, it's important to know how to determine whether you're using the newest mid-journey model. Second, understanding the most recent models helps you adapt when new models come out. When mid-journey changes what the default model is, you might need to know how to switch back to the previous model for a time until you get used to that new model. Third, some features work differently or only work with specific models, so knowing what version you're using is helpful context. For example, V7 has a styling parameter called EXP, and it's not available in any of the other models, and it may not be available in future models. All of the parameters that I've shared in this video, however, have been included in every model that Midjourney has ever released, so it's a safe set of parameters to learn first because there's that longevity and history there. If you're looking for a beginner's guide to prompting with Midjourney, I'll link a video in the pinned comment below. I also have a free PDF guide that I keep updated with all of Midjourney's parameters and a video that goes with that as well. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining my Patreon community where you'll find all of my monthly prompt collections, exclusive videos, and other Midjourney guides. You'll also be the first to hear when my Midjourney course is released. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.